When LEGO brought Harry Potter back from its hiatus in 2018, one of the first sets, and my personal favorite from the rebooted line, was the Hogwarts Express. It included the train, the tender, and the passenger car, along with six minifigs, and a train station for just $80. An excellent playset, and probably the best Hogwarts Express at the time. I thought that, here we are four years later, LEGO Harry Potter might have run its course, and yet they are still kicking because they just released the better version of the Hogwarts Express, except it costs $500, and it's a bit expensive. It might be the best LEGO Harry Potter set ever, although there is certainly an argument to be made for the Hogwarts Castle, so we can definitely have a debate there. But in this video, we're comparing the $100 Hogwarts Express to the $500 Hogwarts Express. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Unboxing each set isn't as different as you may think. There's just thumb tabs and a pull for the cheaper set, and then when you dump it out, you find all of the parts for the set. The singular instruction manual is packed in plastic, so you don't have to worry about it bending. There's a small sticker sheet included, and you have pretty standard Lego instructions, just going step by step. There's nothing really to write home about here. If you look at that, it's a 2018 Lego Harry Potter reboot lineup. For the larger model, you just have three tape seals you have to cut, and on the inside flap, it actually tells you about a bonus they've included in the set with a nine and three quarters ticket plate. Inside the box, you'll find a big white box that houses the first half of the build's bricks, and then all the other bags are loose within. The instructions are notable, however, because they come in a cardboard sleeve that, when opened, will have your very large sticker sheet. And then you're gonna have four separate instruction manuals, one for the locomotive, one for the tender and train track, one for the passenger car, and then one for the nine and three quarters platform. Other than the building time of the $500 model being much longer, more in the neighborhood of eight to 12 hours instead of like two hours, uh, the front cover of the first book actually has a little bit of reading to do about how LEGO is making their packaging sustainable. But more importantly, to the building experience, it has a bit of literature about Harry Potter and the set itself. You can pause to read anything you like, but I mean, this is one of the coolest things about the newer, very expensive Lego sets where they'll give you a real insight into the set right before you build it. So you can get quite a bit out of this, I think, with all the different sections in a few different languages. With only six figures in the cheaper Hogwarts Express versus 20 in the newer one, all of them are also represented with versions in the $500 Hogwarts Express. So we'll take a look at the cheaper versus the more expensive sets figures. On the left, of course, is gonna be the cheaper set. And first off here with Hermione, we have the same outfit, but just slightly better on the newer version. They've also introduced the mid leg. So you actually get a little bit of posability out of some of these younger figures this time, which I think looks rather nice. As far as back prints and hair pieces go, the back print is nicer on the newer one. And I would argue the hair piece is nicer too. The Dementors, as far as I can tell, are exactly the same, and even if they're not, they're so close it doesn't matter. Lupin here is way better on the $500 version. He has a fully matching outfit and the face just looks a little bit more unhinged. I think the general removal of the teeth there to make it more of a gaping hole for the mouth just makes the guy look crazier. This is his normal look, but I much prefer the other one. Harry Potter sees minimal changes, but changes nonetheless. And one of the interesting things that I noticed on this figure is the older Harry Potter, his face just looks bigger as a print. Like I feel like they shrunk the glasses for the newer figure. I don't know if you guys are seeing the same thing I'm seeing, but his face just looks smaller on the new one. Ron Weasley also has quite the glow up here, just looking much better in the newer set. And my favorite comparison is the Trolley Witch. I think they really nailed the new one. Adding on those red legs just looks so much better than the gray legs. And the actual trolley is a significantly different and in my opinion, better build. It's much thinner and they've just added a more colorful vibe to it. So many more details thanks to the sticker pieces that just weren't there on the older ones. So I think they did a great job with the new Trolley Witch. And like the wheels don't look as big and crazy. Like, yeah, definitely better uh, in both areas for the Trolley Witch. Looking at the full picture here, you'll see six versus 20 minifigures in the $500 set. I just think you're getting way better and generally cooler minifigs in the more expensive set, as you should. Uh, that doesn't mean the minifigs in the $80 set are going to be disappointing or necessarily bad, but it's definitely an upgrade here four years later and for five times the price. And like I said, it really should be. There's been some drama with those two characters on the end, and I genuinely think that the older Ron and 
Hermione should have been included in their place, but other than that, there's nothing bad to say about the figure selection in the $500 set. Both sets include substantial train station builds as part of the experience. In the $80 set, you have the half that is King's Cross Station, in which there's a little bridge that goes over where the train tracks would be. Unfortunately, there are no train tracks included here, but then right here, there is platform nine and 10, and then there's a wall. Through that wall, you can take a minifigure with his luggage and run him through it, just like in the movies, and then he enters platform nine and three quarters and promptly falls onto the train tracks where he'll be run over by the Hogwarts Express. Inside platform nine and three quarters though, we have the newspaper stand with the Daily Prophet and wanted signs for the prisoner of Azkaban. It's not a ton of space here on the floor, but you don't really need it because you do only have the six figures in the set. But I still think it's very neat to have the full train station here that the train can fit through and pull up to uh, platform nine and three quarters and pick up the passengers. It's a little unfortunate there's no actual train track in this one uh, to be running through here, but I suppose you could buy and add your own. Platform nine and three quarters in the $500 set is ginormous by comparison. It's also just much more more elegant. It's got a quote tile at the top and then below you actually have a little display plaque with information about the Hogwarts Express and obviously at 500 bucks uh, this whole set just takes a uh, bigger approach towards display and bigger is a very good word there because this thing is ginormous. It's got a couple of archways technically. I guess it's one and a half and a half but it's two and you could obviously build more onto it which I think would be really cool to see people mock up and do. The inside is hollow so the whole thing isn't all that heavy and you might be wondering what those Technic pins are there for. It's not to connect to another train station. Included is a full length train track for your display that can fit the entire $500 Hogwarts Express set. So you can very easily attach the train platform here by just connecting up the Technic bits that you see and pushing together. Just like that you're ready to go. So the train is in its three separate sections and at the front section of the track here, we actually have some bricks that are going to attach to the bottom of the train because otherwise this thing could roll off of this very easily and for display, it would just wouldn't be good. So essentially you just need to line this one up to the back and that would be the easiest way to attach on. Then you're just gonna make sure it's attached to the studs. It comes off just as easily as it went on. So when you're done, you can literally just take it off. It's not a problem. But with it securely on there, you'll see that it doesn't roll around. It can't do anything. When in comparison, if we bring the tender in and put it on you'll see what could happen theoretically is the whole thing could just roll off the end of the track or something and that's what they're trying to avoid with this so that's why this is like hard attached uh, to the track so you can attach that bring the big part of the train over and attach that and just like that we have the entire train on the track pulled up to the platform and something you can do with the platform that you might not know is while it is nicely lined up here so you can have your characters enter like a door if you don't feel like it's properly in the right spot you can just pull it off and you can move it down a slot and so now you can have it displayed like that so it's actually just all at the uh, end of the train here instead of like partially in front of the tender or whatever and what I think is really cool is the idea of someone coming along and adding on more sections but obviously that would cost more than the $500 you've already spent you might not want to do that. Ultimately for me, if I display this though, it's being displayed without the train station. As much as I like it and as nice as it looks, I think the train is just the display I want. You can really populate the scene well with the figures from the seventh movie and there's still tons of other studs for versatility as far as where the figures are standing or if you wanna add in even more minifigs. Comparing the $80 and the $500 train engine, despite the massive size difference, they obviously retain a generally similar look. However, the $500 version just goes into much more detail. You can see some of the yellow accenting lines just completely absent on the smaller, cheaper model. That's something that would be maybe added as a sticker detail that just isn't. One cool similarity is the Hogwarts Castle sign on the side of each train is the same piece. And I actually prefer it on the smaller model because it doesn't pop off as easily. It's actually attached in a better way versus on this set. I think it just pops off of the set really easily and can fall off. So I find it to be a bit more annoying on the $500 version. One place I definitely think the $80 version outshines the $500 version is the number on the side of the train. The sticker wasn't applied great. Thanks, Corey. Anyway, regardless of the skill of the sticker placer, it is a little bit awkward to have it be two sticker pieces versus the singular sticker piece on the smaller set. I think it's much preferable to have it in one piece and I think it looks better no matter what. You can see the front of each train is massively different too. It just feels really stuffy on the $80 version versus there's just a lot more space on this $500 version for it to spread out and feel more spaced out for like the lights on the front and the bumpers and everything. And then you also have the Hogwarts Express sign and the number on the front and that's all just one piece printed on the 
smaller set versus the actual depth of it on the more expensive bigger set. It's just nicer. The way the wheels look when they move is also pretty different. You can see this bar just moves in and out as the smaller train moves and it looks nice especially for an $80 set. However, on the more expensive set, it just looks way cooler. You can see there's a lot more intricacy to the movement, more moving pieces, and that third wheel actually is pulled along with it, unlike on the smaller set where that third wheel doesn't seem to want to move with the whole assembly. So that's a bit annoying with this other set. Now something cool the smaller set can do that the bigger set can't is you can pull this piece up and then you can actually have it be able to turn easily on train track because this is made to go on the smaller Lego set train tracks. But if you don't want it to be turning, you just push this down and it'll keep it straight most of the time unless you lift it up a little and then it can just fall out of its place which can be a bit annoying but it's still a very nice function. The space for the train conductor minifig is massively different on both sets. It has a all black interior on the $500 version and you actually have a train conductor minifigure to stand in there. And then on the smaller version, despite having a little bit more fun detail and some actual gauges in there, it doesn't have a train conductor figure and it does have the ability to take the roof off, so it's like it should have a figure to put in easily because the roof comes off easily, but it's just not there. So don't really understand the, the logic there. Maybe they just wanted to have the feature anyway, but there's no actual figure intended to go there in the set. Another interesting view is the bottom sides of these trains. The simplicity of the $80 model is appreciated for a younger builder, but when you're spending 500 bucks on an 18 plus set, getting that extra complexity, maybe making a more challenging build, but definitely a cooler look, any more accurate function functionality, it's a very nice difference to have. I was really surprised by the difference in shaping I saw between the tenders. The smaller $80 set tender is much boxier than the $500 set tender. They really elongated it, made it a little bit more rectangular, and I think it looks so much better on the bigger set. It kind of ruins the look of the smaller set to me. It's, the smaller set was originally my favorite Harry Potter set when they came back out with it in 2018, but now that I see it compared to this and just how much worse it looks, it really throws it off for me. It doesn't mean it's bad or that people haven't and shouldn't enjoy it but it's a it's a stark contrast for sure it does have the hogwarts railway sticker on the side and that looks nice you can see the wheels on the bottom and it's actually something that this smaller set does that surprised me it does use metal here for the axle so it's actually a metal axle it's really cool it creates a very low friction uh feel for this you can see it just really smoothly rolls around really do like that that's a quality thing there and then inside you'll find nothing but emptiness but i like that there's a hash that's like a fun play feature where you could have a minifigure hiding there the bigger tender has nothing of the sort as far as play functions but the top of it does have a much better look for like the coal and everything so really do appreciate that it does also have the hogwarts railways on the side there with just a much nicer looking uh, sticker for details just so much bigger gives you so much more space uh, and then they have the yellow outline for that just looks way better because it's actually brick built instead of just part of that sticker on the smaller set and then the bottom here while it doesn't use metal for the axles it's also relatively low friction but i would say just not as low friction as the other one plus it's just a heavier model so it's going to just have more weight coming down on that but yeah this thing looks so nice compared to the 80 dollars set it's uh it's pretty crazy but they're both good in their own right the train cars between the two sets also have massive differences. On the $80 set, it's just tiny, but much like the tender, it does include uh, those metal axles, which look great, work great, so you get a really smooth roll, and it almost rolled off the table. As for the $500 set, it just uses plastic axles. It also just looks way nicer on the bottom side than the $80 set, of course, and it's just a bit of a slower roll, heavier sounding roll, I guess is the best way to describe it. It kind of has a rumble on the table, which I think is pretty cool. Another interesting note is that on the $500 set, you have the proper number of wheels versus the smaller set's train car with only a single wheel on each side. It, it looks very awkward when you realize that it's supposed to be double wheels on each side of the train. Uh, yeah, it's bad. I don't mean for this video to crash on the smaller set because I genuinely think it's good for the price, but it's just crazy how much more they're able to pack in at the $500 price tag. You can also see some very nice yellow lines along the side of the $500 set, and those are mostly absent on the smaller set, except for kind of a dark tan color line that runs the length of the smaller set under the windows. I actually much prefer the look on the top of the $80 set with the gunmetal gray studs because 
The light bricks just look awkward peeking out of the top of this and frankly inaccurate when it's supposed to be black on the top. It's obviously a functional choice that they decided to go with, but that doesn't mean it looks accurate, unlike this one, which has the all black look and looks nice. Unsurprisingly, the ends of each car are substantially different as well, where you have some wiring or tubing or something on the back with a light and a lever and an actual working door. Like the back of this train is fantastic versus the smaller $80 set where you just have an opening and you're gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> the other side of the train is more of the same where you have the great door and lever and light and everything versus the opening. To access the interior on the smaller train car, you just have to pull the roof off. And then if you wanna see more, you can actually pull the siding off. And you do have four seats on the inside, but there's really nothing else going on. You can't expect much with the space you're given, but you can take a figure like Harry Potter and stuff him in there, but he does have to stand because they do have the small legs that don't bend. And you can take full size figures here and sit them in as well. As it should, the $500 set does offer a lot more for the interior of the train. It, like I said, does have doors on the side of the set that you can open, but it doesn't really give you great access to the interior. If you just lift it up like this, you can see we'll pull this whole panel off. There is a very easy top-down access. There's a storage area for some luggage. There's also a notice board sticker, which I think is a nice detail. And then on the other side, we basically have an empty storage area. You can put anything. I put a frog there for now, but you can totally put like the trolley witch with her trolley there or something. Moving back, there are three individual sections you can access by pulling off the panels like so. One, two, and three, and they each have a different quote tile above them. Starting off the first movie here, we have Hermione's quote, has anyone seen a toad? And we can take figures like Ron and stick them in there. I think this interior section is really cool with the candy on the ground and the rat. I think it's just a lot to like about it. And then of course on the top, we have the light brick, which lights up nicely, but there's no way to keep it on. And honestly, it's just to me a wasted thing because I'm not gonna be using it. The next section is for Ron's quote, I think someone's coming aboard. Again, you have the light brick there, which you can see the Dementor a bit better when it's on, but like, yeah, it doesn't add a whole lot to me. Still a nice section though, those interior train seat sections are great with the rooms. The final main section here has Luna Lovegood's quote, and it has way more seats. It actually extends all the way back there, so I think you get seven total seats. It's not like a private room like we have with these first two, but it's a nice different section. And at the very end here, we again have just doors on the end where you can have a figure like Draco Malfoy maybe inside. And we will of course have easy access from the top down, just pulling that panel off. You can see some studs at the bottom for figures or other things to attach to, to hold them in place. It's a nice back section. The other side of the $500 train can completely be removed like so. We knocked the Dementor down, but we'll get him out of the way a little bit. You can see there's actually the doors which can be pushed closed. They are something that move pretty freely. So I've noticed that even in just moving the train around a little, they'll just slide back. So it's kind of unfortunate that they won't kind of lock into a place so that they'll actually stay closed or stay open. They'll just kind of move freely. And you also have this walkway here that's just barely wide enough for a minifigure. Essentially, you can have the Trolley Witch or the Dementor making their way down the hall, which is nice. If you're a massive Harry Potter fan and you've got the money, the $500 Hogwarts Express Collector's Edition is totally worth it. To me, it does feel a little bit wasteful to have this extra platform because it's not something that I personally want out of the set. I would have rather paid 400 bucks without the platform, but it's still a pretty cool looking platform. And I think for some people, they will really enjoy it for their display. But for others like me, I'll be deep attaching it and just displaying the train on the track. That being said, the train on the track is like four feet long, so you're gonna need a special display spot for it. It's not gonna fit on any of my normal shelves in the room. I don't even think it would fit over there, even though I already have some cooler sets over there. So you kind of get the point. If you're like a college dorm room type of collector, the smaller Hogwarts Express is really what you're stuck with. It's what you have to go with. You're not gonna be displaying this giant $500 thing. Plus, if you're in college, you probably don't wanna be spending $500 on Hogwarts Express. So that's why the cheaper one exists for people that don't want it or for kids that want to play. Like if you're buying this for a kid, you're doing it wrong, right? Kids get this set. That's where they should be. I think both sets present good cases for purchasing depending on what you're looking to do with your set and of course how much money you have to spend. <laughs>